Today I will show you a crime, thriller film from 2005, titled Revolver. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. After seven years of confinement, Cockney gambler Jake Green is finally freed from prison. Two years after his release, he and his brother Billy go to one of the most important casinos in the area with the intention of getting back the money they are owed by the owner, crime boss Dorothy Macha. Ignoring his bodyguard Paul's advice, he allows Jake to join his private game. On the way up, Jake hesitates to take the elevator because of his claustrophobia, but the other bodyguards remind him they must climb 20 floors, so he gives in and takes the elevator while fighting a panic attack. Jake's first bet is on a chip toss against another player at the table, which he loses. But this is on purpose, he's manipulating Macha into a sense of false security, so when he makes the same bet with him, he wins this time. Billy and Jake hurry to leave the casino with their bags full of cash, and on their way out, they're stopped by Zack, who tells them they're in danger and he can help them before giving Jake his card. This time, Jake decides to take the stairs, but before he can even go down one step, he passes out and falls down as the card is revealed to say take the elevator. While Jake is rushed to the hospital, Macha expresses his worries to Paul. Jake must want bigger revenge after seven years in jail, especially after the incident with his sister-in-law, so Macha orders Paul to hire the best hitman in the business to get rid of him. At the hospital, Jake is told no cause for the blackout could be found at a first glance, so he should go home and rest while waiting for the blood test results. Billy goes to his own house while Jake takes the bodyguards for protection, but all of them are shot as soon as they arrive. The only reason why he manages to dodge is that he finds a card on the floor that says pick this up, so he bends over to do exactly so. He tries to escape in his car, but the driver is shot too. Luckily for him, Zack arrives just in time to save him and take him away. The hitman, Sorter, can't understand how he missed, since he never misses, and theorizes someone must have tipped Jake off. What he tells Macha when he scolds him, however, is that he missed because he had a bad feeling. Meanwhile, Zack takes Jake to meet his partner, Avi, who has somehow put his hands on Jake's medical file. The test results are in. Jake has a rare blood disease that will cause his death within three days. The men offer Jake their protection in exchange for two conditions, which are not negotiable. He must give them all their money, and do anything they ask for, including answering any questions. They give him three hours to decide, but Jasky leads without saying a word because he's convinced they're trying to trick him. The results he gets at the hospital are the same ones, but Jaskier once again thinks the lad must have been paid by Zack and Avi, so he gets a second opinion from his private doctor, who also gives him the same prognosis. After threatening him with his gun to make sure he isn't also being paid, Jake admits he has no choice and, after taking money from the bag, goes back to accept the men's deal. As they go out for a ride, Avi explains their loan sharks, and it'll be Jake's money that they'll be loaning. After visiting their first client to drop the money, Avi demands Jake to tell him all about his history with Macha. Macha used to have three very stupid men working for him called the Three Eddies. They lost their card man before a big game and knew Jake was a good player, so they called him to replace him. Jake wanted to refuse, but they threatened Billy's family, so he had to accept to protect them. During the game however, the other men on the table began insulting Jake and his mother. Jake wouldn't accept that so he started a gunfight, the power went off, the money disappeared, and the next thing he knew, someone dropped his name and Jake was being questioned by the police. To keep him from talking, they threatened his niece and accidentally killed his sister-in-law when she tried to protect her daughter. Jake didn't tell the cops that Macha organized the games and was sent to jail for seven years. During that time, the Eddies upset Macha in some way which resulted in him using them as concrete. After visiting a bunch of clients, Zack sends Jake to stay at a motel. Meanwhile, Macha and Paul visit crime kingpin Sam Gold, considered the ultimate figure all other crime bosses want to be like. However, Gold never receives visitors, so instead they meet with his advisor, Lily Walker, who accepts to broker a powder deal with Macha. She also reminds him that Gold doesn't like publicity or give second chances. Sometime later, Jake gives Zack and Avi more money before he's asked about his time in jail while playing chess with Avi. Jake had been given two options, 14 years of normal time or 7 years of solitary, so he chose solitary. His cell was between two men, a chess master and a con man, that had been there for a long time, and while they never talked to each other, they knew everything about each other. During the first five years of Jake's sentence, the three of them would communicate by sending messages written on the library books, and that was how Jake learned their formula to win any game in the world. The two men were planning a prison break and promised to take Jake with them, but when they finally left, they disappeared without a word and left Jake behind. When he was released two years later, he found out those two men had taken all his money and only left behind a note that said you can only get smarter by playing a smarter opponent, so Jaker started using the formula to make himself rich at various casinos. As the days pass, Jake continues working by visiting various clients and giving away his own money. He's also supposed to threaten them if they don't pay, but he can't bring himself to hurt innocent desperate people. 
Meanwhile, Avi and Zack are chaining the side of a wall to a truck so when they pull, they break said wall and steal the safe on the other side. This safe has the powder Matcha had promised Lily, so when he finds out he's been robbed, he sends Paul to solve this no matter what it takes. Paul goes to see their rival, Triad Kingpin Lord John, who accepts to provide them with the powder on such short notice but only for an overinflated price. Jake, Zack, Avi, and their team go to the hotel where the exchange will happen. They sneak into a room next to the thugs to make a hole in the wall and inject sleeping gas, putting both Matcha's and John's men to sleep. Then they steal the money and the powder, framing it to make it look it was Matcha that robbed John and vice versa. Sometime later, Jake gets a call from Billy, who tells him he's been asking around and has found out that Zack and Avi are so dangerous that not even gold would touch them, so Jake should get out of there. Jake doesn't listen and goes back to work, where he's being expected to shoot a scared client. He refuses and tries to shoot Avi instead, but he realizes the gun is empty right before Avi knocks him out. Jake wakes up hours later in the motel and gets a call from Avi saying he survived his third day so he should get a checkup. After being visited by his niece and Billy, who leaves him a gun just in case, Jake goes to see his doctor, who confirms the diagnosis had been wrong and Jake is fine. He tries to call Avi and demand answers, but Avi only says he'll have to wait. Meanwhile, Paul has been gathering information, and Jake's name has come up as involved in all the problems his men have been going through, so Macha orders him to kill him. When Jake returns to the motel, Avi and Zack are waiting for him and warn him that Macha's thugs are waiting inside the room. Jake runs away and the men go after him, but he manages to lose them, especially when one of the thugs slips and shoots himself by accident. The other criminals find the body and think Jake did it. Jake goes to see Avi and Zack at their office, where they confess they've always known Jake didn't tell them the whole truth about his old deal with the Eddies. Those three clowns had been waiting for Jake when he got out of prison to kill him, since what he did caused them to get fired by Matcha. To save his life, he offered the Eddies a deal. Every month, he would give them 3% of any money they would lend them. The first time, only one Eddie agreed to it. But when they saw he kept his deal, they all wanted to be in, this time for a 4%. In truth, Jake was paying each Eddie with another Eddie's money, so he wasn't losing anything. It came to a point where they didn't have any more money to lend, so they borrowed from Matcha, who quickly became interested in the Eddie's mysterious moneymaker man. After gambling with the formula and making himself rich, Jake chose that moment to take a vacation with his brother and niece, and that was when Matcha killed the Eddies for not paying him back. Speaking of Matcha, he's having dinner at a fancy restaurant when he's visited by his henchmen, that tell him Jake escaped. Sorter recognizes John's lover pretending to be a waitress, so he shoots her before leaving the restaurant to go after her driver. However, his shooting is still off and he only got to hurt her, not kill her, so before dying, the woman manages to shoot Matcha's finger off in the middle of the commotion. Then, Sorter is sent to Lord John's hideout to kill him and his men. Back to Jake, he's still chatting to Zack and Abby while they play golf on a roof. They explain to him that nobody ever gets to see gold because he doesn't actually exist, he's just a representation of ego and the personification of greed, he only has power over those who invest in him. So what Jake needs to do is change the rules of what he allows to control him. Afterward, Jake takes the rest of his money from the bank and donates it all before sneaking into Macha's bedroom. While fighting with the voices in his head that represent his ego, Jake apologizes to Macha for tricking him out of his money, accepts him as the superior crime lord, and tells him he's made a donation in his name before leaving. In order to confront his fears, Jake takes the elevator, which gets stuck on the 13th floor. While fighting off a panic attack, he has a conversation in his mind in which he rejects his ego, finally stepping out of the game as a free man. Once the elevator being's working again, Jake reaches the ground floor and finds Macho waiting for him with a gun, driven crazy by his own ego. However, Jake is at peace with himself and simply walks past him, which drives Macho mad because he can't understand how someone won't fear him. He begins crying as he understands how thoroughly humiliated he's been. The next morning, Paul brings Matcha all the local newspapers for him to see his name plastered all over them. Jake hadn't been lying when he said he made a donation in Matcha's name, and now everyone thinks the casino owner cares about the community. Matcha is happy to take the credit, but his happiness is short-lived. Paul also informs him that Jake has the powder and he's been playing them all along. Paul, Sorter, and the rest of Macha's henchmen go visit Billy, who manages to hide his daughter in the cupboard when he realizes one of his bodyguards has betrayed him. Once he's found, the men begin hurting him while interrogating him, not believing when he says he doesn't know where Jake and the powder are. Paul's methods are quickly escalating and Sorter starts feeling uncomfortable, especially when they make the girl come out of the cupboard after they hear her sob. Refusing to hurt a child, Sorter rejects his ego and begins killing his fellow henchmen methodically and effectively, but he makes a mistake at the end and gets killed too. Meanwhile, Matcha is visited by Lily. She brings him a wreath sent by Gold, who isn't happy with seeing Matcha's name all over the newspaper since he doesn't like publicity. Lily also informs him that Matcha's time is over and he won't have a second chance, which sends him into another panicking frenzy. 
Avi and Zack take Jake and the powder to Macha's casino, where Avi finally beats Jake at a game of chess while confessing the last few details of the story. He and Zack had been the men in the cells next to Jake's, and they always wanted to take him away with them, but he hadn't been ready to accept the truth, implying they had been nothing but merely figments of Jake's imagination. Unfortunately, he doesn't have time to come to terms with this because at that moment, the casino's bodyguards come to take him to see Macha, who has the girl with him. After dropping the bags of powder on the floor, Jake tells his niece everything will be fine, which drives Macha mad because Jake is still showing no fear even when he's pointing his gun at the child. Humiliation causes the ego voices in Macha's mind to reach the conclusion that Jake can't hurt a dead man, so he puts the gun against his head and shoots, 